climate change, global warming, greenhouse gases. You've probably heard these terms before. Perhaps you already know a bit about them and have formed some opinions. And for good reason. This phenomenon could have some big impacts on your life in the future. Or could it? Let's go over climate change, how it works, and what it's all about. Climate change, formerly global warming, is a broad term for the Earth's overall climate warming at a faster rate than predicted by climate experts. Anthropogenic, or man-made climate change, is a more recently used term, because it might be related to human activity. When we talk about climate change, we usually mean over the past 200 years, since the start of the Industrial Revolution, because that's when we've seen the biggest spike in temperature. Now, some of you may be thinking, the climate has always been changing. And that's correct. Earth has actually been warmer than it is now hundreds if not thousands of times in the past. Last time, it was about 8 degrees Celsius warmer than it is today. And this lasted for over 200,000 years. And, believe it or not, we're actually at the tail end of an ice age right now. So with all that being said, why should we care about the planet warming? Well, see, it's all about the rate of change. Earth may have seen higher temperatures, but rarely has the temperature spiked this quickly. Currently, temperatures are rising 170 times faster than what scientists have predicted. Something must be causing this sudden rise in temperature. But what? Let's look at our options. There are a number of things that affect our climate, such as El Nino, the ocean conveyor belt, which is the flow of water in the world's oceans, and circular movements of air called Hadley cells, which cause the trade winds and the jet stream. There's also the tilt of the Earth's axis, which causes seasons, as well as albedo, the amount of light and heat a surface absorbs based on how light or dark it is. All these factors impact climate, but one that really needs our attention is an increase in greenhouse gases, especially carbon dioxide. Greenhouse gases are likely the biggest contributor to global climate because they trap heat in the atmosphere, and higher concentrations of CO2 have been correlated with higher temperatures. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is one of the most prominent greenhouse gases on Earth. It's not the most powerful, that would be methane, but it is the most widely emitted and is seeing a large increase. Carbon dioxide comes from a lot of places, such as volcanoes, soil, oceans, and animals. Even cows release greenhouse gases like methane when they burp. Plants are great at reducing CO2, as they consume it and release oxygen during photosynthesis. But humans are a new source of CO2. We've invented machinery like cars and power plants that burn fossil fuels like coal and gas, releasing CO2 as a byproduct. Agriculture and livestock also dramatically affect landscapes, especially forests, as they reduce the number of native plants that would normally absorb and store CO2 from the air. So temperatures have been going up, and CO2 levels have been going up. But how can we be sure that it's our carbon dioxide? Well, for one, just like the warming, the start of the CO2 increase coincides with the start of the Industrial Revolution, about 200 years ago. CO2 levels in the air also seem to change according to energy usage. Here's how CO2 levels change over the course of one year. Notice how the levels drop during the summer in the northern hemisphere, when plants are more active. Then, in the winter, CO2 levels rise as the plants lose their leaves and people use more energy to keep themselves warm. Okay, but what if this is just a coincidence? What about volcanoes? Well, consider this. Carbon atoms have several versions, or isotopes, and different isotopes are made by different sources. Carbon-12, or C12, is the most common isotope, and is the type of carbon that plants use, while C13 and C14 are produced from inorganic sources like volcanoes and radiation. Now get this, we've seen a smaller proportion of C13 and C14 compared to C12. This means that more C12 is being released into the atmosphere, and there's a good chance it's coming from fossil fuels, which are made from ancient plants. Scientists also measured an estimated CO2 output from volcanoes across the globe, both surface and underwater, as well as output from fossil fuels, and discovered that volcanic emissions are about one hundredth the amount of anthropogenic emissions. And that's being generous. That's a lot to take in. But what about solar flares? The sun does go through predictable 11-year cycles with increased heat and UV rays, called solar maximums. But it turns out only a small fraction of the extra heat from solar maximums makes it to the Earth's surface. And these bursts are minuscule compared to the heat the sun produces normally. Alright, let's just say that it's us. So what? What does the Earth warming actually do? Well, actually, quite a lot. Let's start off with the obvious. The ice caps are melting. Most of this ice lies on top of the water, but the rest can be found on land like Greenland and Russia. When this ice melts, it falls into the ocean and raises the water level. Water also expands under warming conditions, causing sea levels to rise even further. 
Rises of even six inches can threaten coastal cities in Florida and Louisiana, especially during storms. Snow melt on ice caps and mountaintops also shrinks habitat for many species, like polar bears and chinchillas. Speaking of habitat, another big effect is what we call rain shifts. Basically, animals and plants are moving farther away from the equator and closer to the poles, which has all sorts of consequences. Planting zones are shifting northward. Just look at these USDA garden zone maps from 1990 and 2012. Venomous species like black widows and brown recluse are also expanding their range and moving to temperate regions, as are various diseases and disease-carrying organisms like ticks, mosquitoes, and nematodes, increasing the prevalence of illnesses like Lyme disease, West Nile, and malaria. And this goes for diseases that affect crops, too. Another impact on agriculture is that plants and pollinators are emerging at different times, leading to insect die-offs and unpollinated crops. What's more, here's an impact of climate change on fisheries, ocean acidification. This happens when carbon dioxide combines with water in the ocean to form carbonic acid, lowering ocean pH and making it more acidic. This impacts the larval development of key seafood species like tuna and lobster, decreasing their survival rate. The warmer, more acidic waters also cause corals to bleach and become more brittle, essentially killing them, as well as the reef ecosystems they support. That's a lot of impacts. So what can we do? Unfortunately, there's no single solution for stopping or reversing climate change. But in a nutshell, decrease CO2 levels wherever possible. Some ways you can cut your own carbon emissions are by driving and flying less, having fewer children, eating less meat, especially beef, and using less power in general. Deforestation also takes away trees that remove CO2 from the atmosphere. So go ahead and plant some trees. Native ones, that is. But that alone won't solve everything. We as individuals can only do so much. Companies and corporations have far more power and influence not only socially and economically, but environmentally. We need to make greater use of alternative energy sources like nuclear, wind, solar, and hydrogen. We can reach out to companies and encourage them to enact large-scale reforms to energy and transportation. Your dollar can go a long way. You can also contact local politicians and urge them to address climate change in your city or state. Don't underestimate the power of changes on a local scale. They can add up. Experts don't know how long we have until the consequences of climate change start to get out of our control, but some estimates place a deadline around 50 years from now. In the grand scheme of things, that's not too far away, but it does mean you have the rest of your life to make a difference. And there's no time like the present.